Dear God, I was wondering what day you might be coming home. We've missed you, but we're doing the best we can with what we know. I gotta say though, if we looked at the past, and even if we looked ahead, we'd see a mix of the good and bad. But could this be all there is? 'Cause what we know is everything we've been told. So what are we supposed to do? Dear God, I wanna hear it from you. She said, Hey, thanks for calling. There's no time like the present. To wake up to heaven on earth. This is it. This is the truth. There's no need to worship what already lives in you. Dear God, I mean no disrespect. But this sounds just like the opposite of everything they said was true. But it feels like a gift, like a breakthrough from what we know. It's everything we've been told. So what are we supposed to do, dear God? I want to hear it from you. She said, "Hey, thanks for calling. There's no time like the present to wake up to heaven on earth. This is it. This is the truth. There's no need to worship what already lives in you." This is the audio recording for an article on Medium.com, dated May twenty fourth, twenty seventeen, by E. M. Meyer. It's called "The Mother of All Confessions: My Open Letter to Humanity." When I awoke this morning, I found that I was completely unable to take one step further in my life and upon this beautiful planet. Unless, of course, I sat down and wrote this letter to you. I know that most who feel the way I feel in this moment would see no other option out there, and the next thought might be suicide. Honestly, while I've considered this on a few occasions in my life, this is not what this letter is about. This is about something even more terrifying: telling the truth. I lived a lie for most of my life. While I tried to talk to people about it and even write songs about it, I noticed that most would shut down, excuse themselves, or laugh nervously when it all became too weird. Very few in my life have been able to be fully present with me while I sound out my truth. Some have been present to a point, and then I quickly lose them. Even therapists were uncomfortable with me. The familiar glaze washes across people's eyes, and then I watch the defense mechanisms kick in. I've watched it so many times that I now consider myself to be an expert on this phenomenon. I've observed it in myself too, when I would give up on truth telling and revert back to the way we're supposed to behave here. I did develop my own coping mechanisms over the years. We all do it. Still, I remained aware that I was, in fact, desperately trying to cope inside a very cramped, tight-fitting box. Addiction and really any dis-ease is only an outer symptom of a deadly condition called lying, and feeling forced to play along with a game that we have no interest in. I think they call it the. Rat maze of the American dream. I've spent my entire life trying to figure all of this out. 
What happened to us? I suppose I'm a born detective. I love everything about getting to the truth and justice for all. Eventually, my dedicated attention paid off, and I cornered the culprit. Our total avoidance of emotions and feelings and disregard for the feminine aspect of our consciousness. We're programmed to avoid feeling anything that might disturb our carefully crafted story reality here. But if I may be so bold, it isn't actually our story. It's a story, image, and clothing that we were willing to wear as an interface with this fragmented, left-brained reality. We believed this was life. In truth, very few of us are actually living or actually connecting with anyone. Some of us received the gift or curse of being temporarily taken out of this maze and seeing a bigger picture view. And it's why my heart presses me to share this with you. You are so much more than what you were told. Who am I to speak so authoritatively on this fascinating discovery in human behavior? How am I qualified to analyze and report on such things? I didn't finish college. My vocabulary is mediocre at best. I've never made a success of myself in the world. I'm not religious, traditional, national, or political. In fact, I don't identify with very much in this world at all. It's been a lonely life indeed. I am a contactee, and a lifetime one at that. Are you laughing nervously yet? I learned a lot through this contact with non-human intelligence. Let's call them angels for now, if you'll stay with me to the end of this letter. You see, I took action because I couldn't lie anymore. It's not possible to lie in the present moment. Most people live in past or future stories, disconnected from the awareness of energy, of more. As a result, we've been duped, manipulated, and controlled. For years I sacrificed my heart and soul to go along with the pure insanity of this machine-like existence. I can no longer perpetuate a superficial script, nor enable anyone who continues to pretend that this upside-down world is real. I wrote a book about my life in Epiphanies. I feel better now, but I still need to bridge the distance in my relationship with you. As uncomfortable as you all might be at this point in my letter, this is real, far more real than what we were taught was real. As long as I am here, I will continue to share it. Think of it as my contribution to breaking the spell something that we can't possibly understand unless we are courageous enough to recall our wholeness as our Creator designed us and all of the natural world to be. Perhaps one day you will come to a crisis in your life, a place where you are brought into the present moment and you are highly pressured to reconcile to the truth. And just like what occurred for me, you will no longer be able to live a partial life. However, Unlike my experience, you won't be alone. I'll be here, along with many others, meeting you in the foyer with a knowing smile and hug. You know, the crazy ones. The real insanity is happening now on a collective level, out there on the world stage, but it's only reflecting the deep divide within our own individual being. Trust me. We're only using a very small piece of our available consciousness. It's not that we're inept or stupid. It's simply that the conditioning worked very well for most. For some of us, not so much. We were contacted from beyond this very strange reality, or we died and returned, or we ingested and became lucid through the natural plant medicines, etc. As a result, we know there is more and it feels near impossible to translate it to the collective, left-brained prison cell. We all have an opportunity to know the truth and reconcile this truth within. Otherwise, we continue to perpetuate small, victim-oriented thinking while we easily project all of our disowned, unacknowledged trauma onto others. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Like I said, I'm not religious, 
but this may have far more meaning to me than I would guess some of the pious people I've encountered in my life. I'll take this one step further. If we do not know thy whole self and reinitiate our instincts, we will continue to be at the mercy of our conditioning. By continuing to ignore what is true for us and our creator-given power, we hand over our mind and body to those who are very happy to continue defining us as something that is employed to serve their needs. Our value in this fake construct is to perpetuate a dualistic, good, bad, unhealthy, war-based reality while a select few profit from our ignorance of the truth, as well as our disconnect from the feeling glory of all that we are connected to. We don't have to end our physical life to rejoin this glory and know our innate value once again. Just start telling the truth. My book is about how all of this unfolded for me. It's my Be the Change You Want to See offering. It's brutally honest, and in the end it isn't really about ETs or angels or anything taboo out there. It's about what's here in our hearts. It's our source, creator, God, trying to reach us through the bullshit. This is what awakening is. This is what the return of the sacred feminine is, the rest of the cosmic song that we originated from. The truth is a felt experience, but you won't be able to feel it unless you are committed to dissolving the walls that have prevented you from being it right here and right now. No more excuses. Welcome to real life, truth, and love. Embody it and demonstrate it now, as all of our revered spiritual teachers did. None of them wanted you to worship them. Pure and simple, they wanted you to know the truth of who you really are. And when you rediscover it, please join the growing choir. The sound of truth is powerful, and it's the perfect medicine for shattering spells. She said, hey, thanks for calling. There's no time like the present to wake up to heaven on earth. This is it. This is the truth. There's no need to worship what already lives in you. Hi, I'm Mike Carroll from Language Letters of the Heart, and this is Eileen Meyer, and she's going to talk about Eileen Meyer stuff, and her aunt, at some point, hopefully, going to talk about her fabulous book, uh, Kyopa. Kyopa? Kyopa, Contact Within. Kyopa, Contact Within, which, which I have read. And parts of it have actually stuck into me. <laughs> You're stuck. Oh, no. I, I got, I got uh, what do you call it, imprinted. It's a very good book. I mean, Thank you, Michael. Uh, it's kind of mind-blowing. What I, what, I, what, what, what I kind of summed it up is that it, it, is, it is the pattern or the archetype of awakening. It is like if you take the core of what awakening is supposed to be and what it can be and what the end result uh, in the, the the authentic result is that's what you embodied in that book, and uh, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate you inviting me to talk. Oops. So we've already talked for an hour. So I don't know. Yes, I was going to mention that too. Like I think we covered everything in the universe twice, and, and now we're going to go. Okay, here's the real interview. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it'll all come back in where it needs to be. Mm, I'm not. I'm not worried about it because it's really uh, to to set this interview up a little bit for the people who are, who are watching. It's all about feeling, and it, and it is what is the what is the feeling that you're feeling now, and. Uh, what is what is what is feeling the feeling 
that's really what's awakening is what it what is feeling the feeling mm. when you get those two together that is a, there's a kind of an awakening there that cuts through all the thoughts and all the illusions and all the yeah. traps it's just what's feeling the feeling and the feeling mm -hmm. and that presence um, it is a presence that builds mm -hmm. and and you can actually lose yourself in the feeling and that's a kind of a it's a kind of a unity consciousness where it is just the feeling and that is that's a pretty uh, advanced state to be in mm -hmm. yeah and and we share um this kind of work you and i um <clears throat> i have a lot of respect for what you do uh and what you're building and um there's going to be a lot more of these um fresh new modalities um becoming available to people because it is um, such crucial work now in our awakening um, and it's you know there's there's someone uh, out there for everyone to um, to begin to engage in this way so that we can um, as we were saying earlier when we were talking so we can um, you know grow up and wake up and um, become enlightened which is the beginning of our path <laughs> it's the beginning of life with a capital L um, and um, we're all helping each other now. We're all waking up together. This is a group effort for sure. Well, it is part of, one of the things I wanted to mention, which I didn't get around to before, was one of the is when you when you begin to awaken, you don't you don't actually awaken to truth directly. You have some kind of an experience. You have some kind of a knowing, and then because our eyes are focused out onto this world, you say. Mm -hmm. Well, government is full of shit. So that's not real. And religion is like, well, there's some truth in it, but it's something wrong with it. And then and you just keep going. That the, mm -hmm. It's not that. And that's not it. And there's the experience that I had, and then it, this relationships doesn't seem to be the answer. There's only certain things that you can do in a relationship. And, and uh, so you, you kind of awaken to what is, what is not right. What is not real? What is not? What is not true? Yes. And then, and which is kind of necessary. And it's like somebody like David Icke, his whole life is about what's not real, what's not true, what's bad, mm -hmm. what's evil. and all these. There's there's like a whole genre of those people. They just they have every minute detail of how everything got wrong. Mm -hmm. But then you have to go further mm -hmm. into well, what is right. Well, you know, in, in, in his defense, David Icke's defense, um, I have actually heard him talking about love and, and this is where we're going. Um, and, and it was beautiful. It was like, oh, I didn't realize he, he was tapped into that. So I was really, it was very refreshing for me to hear him speak of those things. Um, but I, I, would, I would prefer to hear more of that. Um, not only from David Icke, but from others in this vein. You, you, we can't um, stay looping in the um, anger, rage, um, denial, uh, you know, like the, what is it, the four or five stages of grief? <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it really does apply here. And there's also some other models that apply perfectly uh, to the awakening process, and that is um, addiction. Um, and cult mentality, um, all of these things come into play. Um, I, I would venture to guess that people who do cult deprogramming work, which is very spiritual work, um, I would say that they're going to be in great demand in the very near future because um, we, once we have these awakening experiences, which can come in a variety of ways, and several I cover in my book, but because for some reason I, I had exposure to... <laughs> you know, a potpourri of um, awakening experiences. Um, so, you know, what happens is, is we, we do snap, we kind of get slapped out of, uh, oh, I thought all that was real, but now I see that isn't exactly real, so what is real? And then, and that's when we start on, on the journey of um, welcoming uh, love and, uh, and, and being open to having love define us in our lives, um, to remind us of who we are and what we are connected to, and to all the gifts, all the power that we have 
um, to be full and actualized beings here. Uh, that's, um, that, that's the direction uh, that seems most appealing to me. And that when people come to me uh, for um, a session, it's, it, that's really what their intent is, is I, I know, I know that all that isn't real and I've been um, believing that it is. I've been giving it all my energy uh, and now I'm ready to recall um, my heart and my essence um, in form on earth. So um, there's, a, there's a process that I use to take people through that and I'm equally in, in honor and respect of other modalities and other approaches to guiding people through feeling their feelings and releasing um, all this stuff that we've suppressed because it didn't fit into this very small reality that we've been asked to fit into. So um, I forget where, where we were. <laughs> I, I, wanted to, I wanted to add another layer of icing on this uh, beautiful cake that you have your, your book uh, uh, and, and the, your, your example of who you are. And that is that we're not alone. One of the things that we're told is that, you know, be yourself and that, you know, you're, you're not the tree, you're not this, you're just yourself. And this is your history. And this, right. Mm -hmm. Then there's things that happen, interdimensional things. People get taken by ETs or they have an angelic come and talk to them or they, or they have their ancestors come and, or their, or ghosts or, or some, something paranormal happens to them. Or they, see, or they see a UFO and all of a sudden they start feeling this resonance with the UFO. There's this element that, that we're not alone. Part of the waking up process, part of this path is, you know, wh whether you call it becoming a galactic citizens or, or, uh, or look closer to source, is, is that we're not alone. There's this not aloneness and that, that the love, and then so we get a dose of love from the mm -hmm. or a dose of love from the angelic people or from elementals or from the the earth uh, earth beings right. animals yeah. nature we mm -hmm. get we people connect to a tree or they connect to a river or they connect to a uh you know elephants or horses or dogs and they just we're not alone in this path and because right. of the feeling right there's a feeling there mm -hmm. and you, your book goes in, into that a lot because you were you were infused with feelings from beings who came to like I don't, I don't know what they were doing, but mostly they just gave you the feeling, and then you had to figure it out, and they gave you some clues. Yeah, the data. <clears throat> it's a different kind of data. It's not intellectual data. It's a feeling, knowing data when you commune with uh, non-human intelligence. Whether, as you say, whether that is. Um, walking down by the river with the trees and the birds and the butterflies um, or with um, an intelligence that is not in human form um, but is pure love and um, directly connected to source as we are um, this is this is the cosmic language of resonance and vibration and um, I, I seem to have been um, um, selected, I don't know what the right words are uh, really, but it was my life to be in communion with these beings for most of my life and then trying to um, be normal, <laughs> live a normal life and, and fit in um, and then also to um, keep up with the constant um, transformational experiences that change me to my core. Um, uh, and, and then the process of integrating both. Like I'm not going to get rid of my everyday life and I'm not going to get rid of love with a capital L. Who would, who would frickin' do that? <laughs> um, um, so it's, 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 a, it's a, an integrative process. And I'm, I'm hoping that the book lays that out um, in a way that people can, can follow along and understand that um, it's really uh, showing me as being born into this world, like aware that it's something's really wrong with this place. Did you ever have those feelings when you were a kid? Like, 
Oh, no, I, no, I totally internalized it. There was something wrong with me. I was the one. Oh, that. well, then that comes, of course. Um, and then the low self-esteem comes after that because you can't figure it out. Like, what, I, what is wrong with me? Why does everybody um, think that I'm weird? And, you know, and the bullying and, the, you know, everything, everything comes with it. Um, when you don't, um, when you can't reconcile, reconcile is the operative word, I think, here. Um, you're not able to reconcile the truth of who you are with this strange reality that we're supposed to adapt to. Um, so in, in the book, I, I'm showing how I, you know, you're born in innocence uh, and then, then one has trauma and is victimized in a lot of cases. And, um, and then there's a process of healing that um, and we talk about the emotional modalities, you and I, there are other modalities too, um, plenty of them, but, um, then, then it's back to innocence again, back to our natural state so that we can then tune to beyond this given reality, this very small 3d reality that we're just supposed to accept and say, Ain't life grand? Um, and there are moments, beautiful moments in life. Um, but what, what I and so many others who have these experiences of more, um, what we're saying now is um, there's so much more uh, that most, many, I should say, don't have an idea of because it's not a thought. It's not conceptual. It's what I refer to as, oh, this is the divine feminine. This is what they mean by that. The rest of our consciousness that has been banished so that we would be good, solid citizens and you know, go to our mechanical jobs and do what we do um, to keep this machine going. Um, but you know, and, and, and that's all good and fine. But then when you discover like uh, myself and other experiencers, that there's so much more that we're not told about reality and about what we're connected to, um, that we just, we now feel like we have to kind of shout it from the rooftops or at least, you know, I've gotten to a place in my life where I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. I don't have to protect an image or an identity. Um, I don't have uh, a regular job that I go to that I have to make sure nobody knows this. Um, believe me, I know all about this because I did this most of my life. I had two very separate lives and that's what's outlined in the book, that they have to come together. We have to be truthful about who we are or we will forever be looping in this unnatural reality, closed off, closed circuit system. And you have to use your voice. That's another thing. Another thing, a uh, great theme of your book is to use your voice to express your feelings. Right. Uh, you have this whole thing about just say, saying who you, what's, what are you feeling now and expressing that out loud. Mm -hmm. But you also have the whole music thing that you have, which is, which is your taking the feelings that are inside of you that, mm -hmm. and, and letting them come out. So there's this whole singing thing that happened to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another great theme. Uh, and it's also part of the theme of uh, one of my themes of letting people who've had ET contact and uh, paranormal contact have a voice because you have to take it out of the back room into your heart and then out your mouth. So important to do Very that. Very important. So that, that's what makes it real. Yes. It's not yes. imagination. It's not just a dream. It, it is real when you proclaim it, you express it. Or you right. make, make a video or a recording or something. Right. And, and what we talked about earlier before we were recording, um, the, this intelligence has taught me how to do this and, and then asked if I would share it with others. And it's really about um, um, what they said was, when I say they, I mean it's an energy. It's a field. Um, but we have language to deal with. So I, I say they a lot, um, but it's really 
uh, kind of, I'm part of that they, do you know what I mean? Um, it's not us and them, it's a group consciousness. And um, what, they, what they take me through is that we talked, they say we talked ourselves out of love. We talked ourselves out of this awareness. And we have the absolute power to talk ourselves back into it. So saying, using the voice out loud, and, and yes, it, it's fascinating to me that yes, I, was a, I, I am a singer. I, I was a singer during all of this. Um, and singing, and really singing is f singing f feelings out loud, right? Um, uh, sometimes thoughts, but when I write music and, and sing it, it's, it's about singing my feelings out loud about my, my, mo my music is mostly about my contact and about the awakening process. So it's a, it's a love affair. <laughs> Sometimes it would confuse people because um, they thought I was singing about a boyfriend and um, you know, it, it, it's not, it's a, it's like, it's more like when I love Rumi and, and other poets like Rumi because that's, um, and when you hear the saints um, and their poetry, that's how I would write my music because it was a dialogue with that love um, and the integrative process of bringing that love here. Um, <clears throat> so yes, the power of speaking out loud and hearing the sound, feeling the vibration of our voice and hearing the sound of our own voice in our ears. So it's looping and then when you keep practicing this method that they showed me, it starts to build a field around you and it's magnetic in nature. Um, and then eventually where that took me was I couldn't talk anymore and, and then I'm locked into um, this um, giant circle of light. It's a sphere. And then I was able to um, receive uh, the messages. I could, I could understand messages. And then translation came later. Because um, you don't need to translate it when you're in it. Um, you have all that you need. Um, it's just when you want to tell somebody about it, that's when translation comes in. You're not technically... You don't really technically call yourself a channel, and yet, I usually don't. No, and yet, and I, I never really liked that uh, term too much either. I've never liked it. And yet, you has you have this whole rich history of of knowing these world famous channels and world famous connectors. Uh, that 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 always uh, uh, one of the things that I noticed in in your book was that you know, birds of a feather kind of a thing is, uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, your connection to those guys? I think you had two of them, right? Um, <clears throat> the um, channels that I have uh, connected to just through serendipity, synchronicity, or I see an ad or, um, you know, in the case of Daryl Anka uh, back in the 80s, I saw an ad in a paper and it was the furthest thing from what I thought I might be interested in. <laughs> um, but that magnetic energy starts to fill me. And that's when I know, oh, this is, oh, this is connected to those um, beings that have been with me and have talked to me my whole life. So, and I trust that because uh, it's pure love and it's always been pure love. Um, I've never been steered wrong with it. So when that energy would come in and it would be in relation to the ad I'm looking at, then I'd go, oh, because my body is involved. My body is telling me, not just, oh, I should probably go to that, you know, this kind of um, frequency bandwidth. No, it's my whole body. It's magnetic. And, and then... You don't, when you're in that magnetic energy, action springs forth from it. And you, do, and you, and there's no thought, you're just doing. And then you look back and you go, oh, look what just happened. 
that stuff fascinates me um, when you're when you're in it. Um, so I I went to see uh, Daryl Anka in San Diego, and it must have been nineteen. Uh, must have been like around nineteen eighty six when I first met Daryl. Um, and I was really, I, I, and I was an eye roller, like, oh my God, what are we doing here? You know, my, my intellect was, you know, there and defending everything. Um, you know, within myself, I wasn't, you know, being a biatch um, in the room, but I, inside I was, I was really frightened for myself for having made this strange choice to be in this room with Daryl Anka. So then what changed everything is when he went in, started to go into a trance state, the energy about knocked me out of my chair. And I, I was completely in a magnetic hold. And this always happens when I'm around um, really good uh, channels. Um, I, I'm frozen. I can't move, and it's a and, and it's not a bad feeling. It's a wonderful feeling, um, because it's that love that I know so well. And then I knew, I I felt and knew that I was in the right place. I was absolutely in the right place, and that to stop thinking about it so much, but just connect to that heart energy. And, and get your information this way. And as I said in the book, it was wonderful to have these dialogues with Daryl Anka Bashar over the years, um, because it's a way of, it's, it's, like, it's like our conversation right now and, and the earlier conversations that we've had, Michael. It's, it's a way that we can mirror for each other and reflect and go, okay, so I'm not so, okay, I'm okay, I'm, I'm doing okay. Um, with the, this inner and outer, bridging the inner and outer um, uh, consciousness and experience. And, and, better than, and better than okay. It's like, better, way better than okay. This is it. This is, this is it. You know, this is what you want. This right. Is the frequency, the, uh, the, the mobility. Right. That's what you want. And then meeting, uh, I, take, I take the reader through um, how I met. Robert Shapiro, um, ch a wonderful channel and dear friend as well. Um, and that's, that's just a, a, a kind of a longer story and, and quite magical. Um, that it's, you know, we meet who we're supposed to meet in our lives um, if, we're, if we're receptive. There is a receptivity that, that um, I believe needs to be present uh, in order to, to and, and moving, we keep moving in our lives and, and not freeze and be afraid to do anything or say anything, but to just, you know, uh, I'm just going to be, I'm going to be out there. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to, um, I'm willing to uh, be present in my life rather than follow scripts that I've been getting from my past that you should do this and you should do that. And you got to go um, get a good job and you have to, you know, and all that stuff that, Whenever I would hear it in my life, I'd go, hey, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> you know, again, back to my body and what my body's telling me, the, the wisdom there of, um, you know, very simple exercise we can do when we're making a choice is um, say it out loud. I'm, I'm choosing to, um, you know, stay in this um, relationship that makes me feel poorly about myself. And your body will go, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> and then, and then you say, "Well, I'm I'm going to choose to do this other thing that I don't have a lot of clarity about what it's going to look like, but oh, I feel an expansion when I say it out loud, even though I don't have all the details." Do you know what I mean? Um, our bodies, getting to know our bodies, and um, using the wisdom of the body and the you know the, our feeling nature is really key in in um, evolving and, and making it through this um, challenging time the body um, is 
such a key. It's it's our instrument. It is our greatest friend. It is our great partner. Yeah. Everything you're going to feel is going to be felt in the body with the body. And right. So that takes a lot of respect and a care. You got to sure. care. This body is is able. It's like it almost. There's almost like a feeling of you want the gift of love for the body to feel. Yeah. And that's that's not the way the normal human beings think. Most people think, well, I'm going to use my body to get what I want. Right. Which is different. Right. Right. And we could talk for hours just about that. <laughs> so I realize this is kind of an overview interview. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the things that I learned through contact, um, the importance of working with our feelings, um, making them conscious, um, releasing what doesn't serve us anymore, what doesn't apply, so that we can make way for this, um, for the body to be, um, to begin to resonate with the truth of who we are, rather than all the misunderstandings that we accepted as real and, and what people told us life was. Um, the, the body's like, no, nah, I, I don't agree with that. But once you start to release what no longer applies, all the untruths that, that, that we swallowed or the judgments about ourself, um, which incidentally becomes judgments about other people we see out there whenever we carry our own self-judgment that's an absolute mirror uh, to the outer world and, and these incredible uh, polar opposites that we're experiencing right now is, is simply a reflection of what is polar opposite within our own individual individual consciousness. So um, I forgot where I was. What was I talking about? Uh, we were talking about the body, but there, there's another theme of your book, which I think is, is kind of an overall stitches the book together. And that is, that is, you know, you're brought up in kind of basically a normal childhood, but that means that you're confined to what your parents wanted you to do. You're confined to the religion and the society and the, mm -hmm. you know, so there's a there's kind of like the small you, but at the same time, while you were a child, you had these gigantic uh, blissful experiences, expansion experiences where you'd almost pass out, you'd almost disappear. Yeah. And uh, they're overwhelmingly, beneficial, holy, sacred, whatever you want to call those terms. And then there was the non-acceptance from your uh, family and friends and not being able to express that this most wonderful thing that any human being could ever experience yes. could not be expressed or right. could not find acceptance. And mm -hmm. this is the, the core theme of almost everybody who's awakened or everybody who's had yes. a fantastic experience with ETs or with the grandmother yes. seeing them or yes. the old angels or maybe uh, fairies or something. Yes. And so then that's where the, this dualistic life starts to occur because as a child, we're, we're pretty much integrated. And then we each have our own individual experiences of, um, you know, as we were talking earlier of, of kind of being knocked off of, well, wait a minute, that, well, what's that about? And, and, it, and we get beside ourselves, and we become two different people, one that interfaces with the world and we build an image and an identity there so that we can make money and we can um, um, have friends and love and cars and houses and you know, everything, I'm not saying all that stuff's bad. I'm just saying, why does it have to be two different people? And that was the question that was always um, presented to me each time I would have an experience in my childhood. Why is this happening? And then why do I have to have this relationship with these incredibly loving beings, angelic beings, and then, okay, see ya, uh, got it go oh wait i gotta make myself small again and i gotta wait what and i have to remind myself you know energetically how small i have to be i have to slow everything down to um 
words that, oh, wait, I can't say that because that upsets people, I learned. Um, so you, you, you just, everything just gets so narrow um, that it's like death to somebody who has, who has experienced the expansion and the love of what, what we're connected to. And, and I want to stop right here in this moment and say, my experiences are not unusual. What's unusual is to hear people talking about them, okay? A lot of people have had these experiences. I was told this, I was informed this by this non-human intelligence. There's far more people than you realize, but they're terrified to speak, to say it out loud. Um, and your job, one of your jobs, is to start really just laying it all out there and saying, this happened. It created this rift in, in me. I, I was a split, not a split personality in the terms of, the, of psychology, but I, I had a dualistic life. I, I, um, it's, it's not so much that way anymore because I've, in, I've come a long ways in integrating and I'm not afraid um, to speak about these things now. But what I'm finding in the feedback from the book um, which is, should I hold it up? Sure. And here's my book. Beautiful. Coyopa Contact Within, The Plumed Serpent Rises. It's on Amazon. Um, so, so what happens is um, when people start to read the book, it doesn't matter what their background is. They don't even have to have had an ET experience or even Kundalini. What they relate to is oh, I had to split myself in two or three or four. And I remember that. And I remember feeling like, okay, I have to be this way to others. And then when I'm by myself, I can feel and be this way. So it's really about the split that occurs in our consciousness where we, where we learn that we're, in order to fit into this system and be <laughs> productive citizens, we um, have to set feelings aside. We have to set the feminine consciousness aside. Um, none of this is welcome in, in our um, um, militant uh, patriarchal environment. Well, I uh, studied this. And one of the things that is absolutely true, what you just said about the feminine is not, is not uh, accepted. You know, you look, you look in this world and, and uh, you would think if you call the feminine, you would, you would think that there's this thing, that the, the masculine energy. So the man is over the woman, right? And the parent is over the child. And in, in some ways, the white race is, dominates the brown race and all that kind of stuff. But what it actually is, if you look at who has the least, the least uh, rights and has the least power in history, it is women and children, and black people as a race. Mm -hmm. and then well, you, anyone of color, really. Anyone of any color, right. And then, and then, but if you take it one step deeper, it is those people who feel the most. Children feel more than adults. Right. Women feel more than um, men. And indigenous people, people of yes. color, feel more in general than mm -hmm. Western civilization. Right, do. right. And it, so it is the feelings that have been, that has the apartheid. It is the feelings that are judged or, That's or right. segregation. Mm -hmm. It's the segregated. You can think, but you can't feel. Mm -hmm. that's the, that's a meta message and that's one of the and if thinking is up here and feelings in your belly then that means your heart never gets touched and this is what this is part of what the awakening is is to bring the feelings back up to the heart and to bring the thoughts back in alignment right. to the heart right this is our natural state and and yes it, i have i have pondered these things <laughs> For most of my life, what you just articulated very well, Michael, 
that um, if we can rise above the polarity, um, the constant looping of, you know, racism and judgment of people um, that are viewed as less than, um, it's actually, it's actually a conspiracy to keep feelings from um, our consciousness because that's where our power is. That feelings take us directly to source, to our creator, to God. Um, and this is something that doesn't work well with this existing system. Um, you and could that, please repeat that again because that is, in a nutshell, uh, probably one of those pro profound messages that, that the humanity can have. And that is that uh, about f feelings are connected directly to source and they are not wanted in this environment. That's right. Because that's right. it connects you to source. Right. Because we need um, the way that this um, system was designed. Um, and, and, and make no mistake, it is a matrix-like system. And um, I think if, you, if people, you know, find that disturbing or, or strange or that can't be true, um, simply just go do a little bit of research. Um, we do live uh, in a virtual reality that was designed to um, keep us using only um, a small part of our brain a small part of our consciousness. Um, and it, anything connected to feeling, uh, as you know, we are immediately diverted from or gu are guided away from, or we're judged. Um, you know, I remember being uh, climbing the corporate ladder in some of these um, big corporations I worked for. And if I um, felt something, you know, which, which is a, a really... Um, I'm an intuitive, I'm an empath, and um, I get my information in very different ways than most people um, in, in those uh, business environments. Um, but I've also been highly effective in those environments by using my skills in an undercover way. Um, so, but in a couple of occasions, I remember I was told that you're, you're just too emotional for this job. And, you know, I would have imagined, you know, most people, when I say that, they're probably imagining me going, rah, 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 you know, and complaining like, oh, she's just so emotional, you know, she's not being professional. No, no, no. Um, I, what they were referring to is, if I used the word feeling, if I said, you know, my gut's telling me this, or my instincts are telling me that, uh, that was like, um, no, not, not welcome, okay? So from day one, being born into this world, we are discouraged from utilizing all of our abilities. And a good deal of those abilities come through heart consciousness. And um, because uh, everyone around us is reinforcing that from grandma and grandpa, uh, down to uh, you know to our, our parents and and aunts and uncles and cousins and and schoolmates and um, um, church or, or whatever uh, clubs everybody is reinforcing the same thing so that's how we get indoctrinated into it we say okay I guess this is what life is I mean I bet all of us could you know, at least come close to a time in our lives when we, we went, that was the moment where we said, oh, yeah, I guess just like dad says, this isn't, you know, you need to have your fun now because you got to go into the real world. And even that is opposite of the truth. That's not the real world. The real world is the natural world. It's, um, it's the abundance that we're connected to on all levels, uh, our sustenance, our shelter. Everything is provided by the natural world. But we've been guided into this um, expecting everything, everything to come from the system itself rather than from the earth and from each other in community. Um, 
so it, it's a awakening is really in my view in my experience it's just a reorientation to what's true once again uh, and not being afraid to to do that and to speak about it and to to share with others what you're finding and discovering uh, about um, returning or reorienting to that natural design because the gifts are immense the love is immense um, these stories these bible stories where you know they fall to their knees in the presence of the angel i know what that is i know what that feels like and it's it's overwhelming and it's also a welcome relief that this is true we are connected to this we've just been cordoned off from it in a, in a um, I don't get too much into uh, conspiracy stuff because I don't care what came before what I care about right now is empowering people to uh, break out of these shackles that they simply agreed <laughs> to put on and said okay go ahead tell me who I am define me we've been defined by a system that has no clue the power and the glory of what we're connected to and the other thing you the other thing is the power uh, every thought every word you speak right the power of your words is emotional the power of your being is emotional that is where our actual power is. Yes. And once we deny the power of our emotions and we act normal or we act polite or we act conservative right. or, or we retard ourselves, that cuts off the power. And anytime you have power, emotional power, it, it becomes a type of frequency of love. Anger can be very much love. And even fear can be very much love. So when you have this increase in vibration, it always goes back through the heart so mm -hmm. and the other thing we were talking about was this power is the is the original power uh is the original vibration is this original expression of the universe yes the mother of the universe the universe herself the will a lot of people get confused will for the from the power because will power but will herself mm -hmm. is emotional mm -hmm all emotions mm -hmm. and the first language the language of the universe itself is emotional yeah. like you saying a being can come in you do not have to know who the being is where he came from man woman planet any of that that's when right then with feelings of love mm -hmm. that love waves through you yeah you know everything you need to know yeah and you are so grateful that yeah. you don't say well, well who are you who are you to be coming in here and making me feel bliss? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, and uh, so beautifully said, Michael, um, because, yeah, when it's, when it's experiential like that, when you're actually feeling it in your body, in your heart, it's, it's huge. And then um, to have somebody say to you, but, yeah, but you should have gotten a name because... <laughs> Because they're, you know, they're evil, you know, they can be evil. And, you know, it's like, whoa, stop. Um, you're missing the mark here completely. When you, or, or I've had people say, um, the ETs can do overlays on you and make you think it's ecstasy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Maybe it might feel like, I don't know, um, like Vicodin might feel when they do an overlay. I don't know. I've never had that happen. So, um, but when you're in this um, overwhelming love of our creator, it, you do fall to your knees. I have fallen to my knees many times in my life from these frequencies. And um, it's pure love. And and sometimes it gets scary, yes, because it feels like, well, okay, it's a bit, too much i can't i can't do this you're gonna have to stop because this is all i can process right now of love 
And that, that has a way of making uh, that there's a cognitive dissonance that happens with people there too. Because why would love be hard to take? Well, get ready, people. Get ready is all I have to say. Um, the more that you can prepare yourself for this infusion of what you're connected to, what you're actually connected to, uh, power, grace, love, beauty, wow, it's, it's here, it's available, and this is not new age, this is not woo-woo, as people say, um, and I've always, Michael, I've always wished that when I encountered people that said, um, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, that's just the overlay of the ET, or that's, it. I know, I know what you're talking about, what I would have given to take my little pinky when I was experiencing this and to reach out and touch them and see what, see what happens. Can you, can you even handle this level of this kind of energy? And, and this isn't me boasting or bragging or saying I'm special because it that's, has nothing to do with anything. This is what we are all connected to. So get ready is all i'm saying this this is happening and and if some people are more ready for it than others god bless you for stepping forward and, and for taking responsibility for your own growth and for waking up and for becoming um a, a force of good here a force of love in this reality that um desperately needs to be um turned around, reoriented to the truth of who we are, what's possible. Well, people, people really never consider that there is this great magnetic force in the universe. And that magnetic force is so strong that it generates electricity and it generates the light of stars. It generates the planets and the movement of the planets themselves that is love there's a power that's spinning the earth right now yeah. and then we're rotating around the sun and the sun is rotating around the galaxy that is the that's so big and yet it's also we can we're connected to that and, and it's also right and right, it, here. <laughs> right here whenever that door opens when you just oh, you just open that door a crack and it's like whoa whoa <laughs> whoa you know. yeah Whenever I hear about these people who have spontaneous combustion, I don't even think twice about it. I said, they just connected to the love. Yeah. Boom, gone. Boom. That was it for them. But we don't want to make people afraid of, of uh, engaging um, with this. See, that's no, the thing. Says, no, it's not to be afraid because yeah. the love is also very kind. It's the most kind, the kindest, most fulfilling we don't, people don't talk about fulfillment much, but when you're standing there or you're laying down or you're prostrate and this whole thing is happening to you, there is this kind of fulfillment that, that uh, it's train load, boxcar train load after train load of fulfillment for fulfillment of fulfillment of fulfillment of fulfillment of fulfillment. It's glory. It's that, glory. That, that, and, but it's also, the, it doesn't even have to, it's not even bliss doesn't really cover the word that word doesn't cut it because it, it, there's this ecstasy perhaps and bliss, but then there's this fulfillment and enrichment. And then there's the knowing connected to the knowing of that's the language. That's the core language of the universe. Right. That's feeling. And, and all of our unanswered questions here, you know how there's just so much confusion and what the hell's going on. And, you know, it's because we're not filled in with this resonance and with this knowing. We have blocked it, and we have <clears throat> quite successfully blocked it. But, <clears throat> excuse me, through, the, through this contact that's happening, through these experiences, whether they are through the near-death experience or through contact with non-human intelligence um, or through the plant medicines, um, there's a variety of ways to welcome this reconnection, uh, this conscious reconnection with our source. Um, I, you know, go, move towards the methods that you're drawn to. Um, there isn't anything that says, 
people have to follow what I'm talking about or follow what you're talking about, Michael. It's simply, we're here to inspire, you know, this is, this is happening. Um, and the sooner that people wake up to this, at least to go, you know what, something, something is happening. People do seem to be waking up. People are talking about this more. There's a reason it, it, it actually is happening. And, um, I just want more of us to come together and acknowledge that this is actually happening, that we're <clears throat> the return of the feminine uh, is occurring. Uh, and it's through that, these pieces of ourselves that we sent away because it didn't fit with the, the highly specific plan here to keep us on the treadmill of, of work and bills and, you know, and, and this, and now we do this and now we do that and we follow all the scripts and make sure everybody's happy around me. Um, it's, it's, we can't do it anymore. That's why people have panic attacks. It's why there's anxiety. It's why there's severe depression. It's why there's mental illness in general, because we were not designed to operate with so little of our consciousness. Um, so the good news is, is it is returning and it, and it is far more simple now than it was in my lifetime um, and, and perhaps your lifetime too, Michael, and, and many others. It's, there are people who, have, who are front runners, um, I use that term sometimes, to, to kind of uh, experience it directly and go through it and, and then figure out how to articulate it, how to translate it, how to, um, inter it's all internal and then to learn how to externalize it. And translation is part of that for me. I translate these, this wisdom, this data that comes through feeling and knowing. It's not doesn't have to be translated, but in order to let others know about what they're connected to, that's why I translate it. Well, you are... Uh... You do something pretty amazing that I'm really, really resonated with, and that is you help people. Uh, I'm not, I don't like, I really don't like the life coach thing, but uh, <laughs> mentoring, that doesn't even sound right. There's all, because it really, it's almost like a brother and sister or soul to soul, yeah. friend to friend. There's a yeah. friend to friend thing happening that I like that relationship better you know, maybe older friend or, or more experienced friend, but it's friend to friend. And yeah, I like that. You have that, you have that going on. And I think that is also going to prepare you to perhaps be doing workshops or events later in the future. Is that right? Yes. I'm, I, I'm actually going to be um, talking and doing a workshop, I think two different days uh, in October at the 5D events. Um, I think I sent you the, um, yeah, I have that. You want me to put that up on the screen? Sure. It, yeah. It's the International Symposium of Quantum Consciousness and Healing. Um, I'm working on other events right now. Um, this is one way of doing it, um, to, get it to get the message out to the public. Can you see um, that? There's a yes, the 5D yeah. event. Invites you to Las Vegas, October 20, 22. 20, 2017. There mm -hmm. you are down here. You're down here at the little. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made it. I made it onto the poster. <laughs> yeah, look, look, look who you've got up there. You got Jordan Maxwell and uh, all these people. I'm looking forward. I hope that I can meet some of these people. Well, I like Alan Steinfield. He's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but but the other the other thing I'm being guided to do is to create the healing circles. Um, this came way back in 2006. Um, they, they started showing me in my mind's eye what my work would look like. And because I could not, um, it, was too, it was too much cognitive dissonance for me at the time, all I would do is bring these messages through and then I would file them away um, because I didn't know what to do with them. And what it, what i what i have a passion about is i'd like to to you know literally go into people's homes like i used to do with house concerts um you know across the states uh, at least to begin with and to um 
generate this field, you know, to, to invite people to be present and go, and go through that process with them, with their, you know, feelings and becoming more conscious of feelings. And then join me in that um, magnetic sphere that, that I will generate with this consciousness. And um, with intentions going into that uh, for healing and for more understanding, um, you know, whatever it is, everybody has their own needs and, and, and need to articulate it in their own way from where they are. But that's, not, that's something that's said quietly. And then we'll generate that field and, and help people uh, because this, that was the turning point for me. So when I felt it and I understood this, that this was love and this was our creator and this is what we're connected to, um, beyond any organized religion, beyond new age, beyond anything that we've ever heard about in this place, but going direct to that, once I felt it in my body, that's when it clicked. And that's when I knew, okay, I got it. I got it. Now the practice is being honest about it and sharing it with other people, including the energy. That's why I'm here. I'm here to share this um, because of my actual journey through it. Um, and I'm, I'm here to introduce people to the frequency of their creator as well as the, um, so that they can start to find their own signature frequency. You know, people sometimes think that, well, if we get, we'll get, we'll get completely swallowed up by the creator. No, it really doesn't work that way. It's all love and you have your own signature frequency in harmony and balance with that. And that's where your power is. That's where your passion is. That's where your excitement is. That's when things click. Uh, and move and grow and life can be joyful. You, you see how we've come to a place in this reality where we, we've, we've lost hope. It's like, what, what is this place? Why am I here? I don't want to be here. Well, you're right, but you don't have to commit suicide to change it. And I was just going to say, uh, there is an element that once you really can resonate for yourself, then that is the beginning of the end of pain. And you can right. actually feel that the intensity of the pain of the past is less. Yes. And if you can keep allowing it, even accepting that and bringing that acceptance for the traumas of the past and letting that present frequency match, then it's possible to end pain altogether yes and, and healings as you say right that's so fantastic that's probably one of the most fantastic events i wanted to go i would like to go to sit in that sphere learn how to yeah i i want to do this um yeah. i'm moving i'm moving to washington so i can have access to larger populations because right now i'm in the middle of nowhere um and that worked for me for many years to to live in the middle of nowhere um, now I need to be around, um, and as we discussed earlier, around uh, larger populations, because I, I want, I, I just, as long as I'm here, I want people to feel this, because that's the turning point. Once you feel it, you re, you, your body goes, yes, <laughs> oh, thank God, this, this frequency, this feeling is here, we're going to be okay, um, and, and so I, I'm making myself uh, more available in that way now, not only through the private sessions, but also through the, the group sessions now, um, group healing sessions, where we will not only immerse ourselves in, in the frequencies, but we will talk about really pragmatic things like, you know, how is this done? How do we do this? How do we move from believing that we were so small and insignificant and full of pain and I don't want to be here to, oh my God, I, I, I've never felt more joy and more love in all my life. And, and now I know who I am and I know what I want to do. I remember now. It doesn't have to take a long time like it used to, you know. 
um, we would go to, you and I, Michael, I don't know. I don't know about your previous life, but I, you know, I, I was reading tons of books and going to workshops and doing this and that and trying to figure out what this was that was happening to me and what do other people say and trying to find common ground. And so now here I am, I want to find common ground, real common ground with people now to, to help them remember what, um, help them remember who they are, essentially. So they can be off on their lives. They don't need coaching. <laughs> they don't need workshops. They don't need, you know, once, that's, that's the thing is once this all clicks, then guess what? All those revenue streams are going away because, and we, and we redefine our entire reality because we don't, we're not pieces of, of consciousness anymore. We're whole. And then we get to go discover what it's like to recreate our world uh, from that platform of awareness and wholeness. Well, that's that's pretty uh, pretty profound and amazing. I, I, and in a way, I'd kind of like to end it there because that's. Kind I do. Of, I do have something I want to share, though. But there was there was something that you wanted to share though, and I I was getting around to that. What what is it? You, what was what else would you like to add to all this? Well, I wanted to read a translation. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. I didn't forget. But but I'm full screen now. How do I? You want it on full screen? No, I don't. Oh, exit full screen. Sorry. Okay, left brain. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I was going to put you on my full screen like that. I'm exiting full screen so I can read this thing. Oh, okay. So this is only an excerpt of it, <clears throat> but this will give you an idea of um, the nature of the messages that I began translating. Um, it's through full immersion into the, uh, the energy, and then um, something clicks, I engage with it, and then I, I translate it. And, um, I have an audio file of it. I have audio files of all of them, but some of them I transcribed into words. So um, this is what I'm going to be reading. Do you want to live, truly live? This is what it boils down to, as you say. Now, if you choose to truly live, we are back to this question, what does that look like? Where is the role model? Who's going to show us? Who's going to be the authority for truly living? It is you. You will demonstrate this when you are ready to live fully, to be informed by grace. Show the universe, show life, show all of creation. Please do step up and show us what this looks like. If you are unable to find the answers in the projected world that you have created, this means you must go within your own consciousness and meet yourself there without judgment, without shoulds, just be. Be willing to feel all of the pain, all of the shame, all of the misunderstandings that occurred when you launched into this projected realm, the realm of images. Also be willing to feel the strength and the power, the glory and the grace of what you are naturally connected to. Let this inform you. Let this guide you. Let go heal and live demonstrate to yourself what this looks like in your life when you are in a place where you are demonstrating present moment connection with that grace that feeds you and sustains you and you are practicing this on a daily basis in all that you do in all of your contact with others you will begin to meet others who reside in this natural state as well the power of one is great and grand the power of two or more who meet on this foundation of truth life and love has the power to transform your entire reality, your earth reality, your experience of being in form on planet earth. But you see, it begins with you individually making this choice to be informed by grace, to let go of the cycle of pain and fear and misunderstandings. And even though you do not know what will happen next in your state of grace, that is the beauty of it. Allow it to move through you, 
feel that passion of life and express it in the ways that bring you joy, peace, ways that make you feel alive, truly alive for the first time in your life. The natural world on your planet and all of the residents of the natural world are quite vibrantly and passionately alive. Some of you are able to see this and experience this directly, those who are living actually. Communing with a natural being such as a rose bush can bring you to your knees if you allow yourself to actually experience that rose bush, humbled by its beauty and power and vibrancy. And that is who you are as well when you are willing to drink from the cup of fluid and refreshing, vibrant and passionate life force and to take it in and to allow it to heal you and restore you, restore all of your senses. And it goes on, but I don't know how much time we have. Uh, it's tight. We have all the time that we need, but perhaps we'll start to wind it down. Okay. Uh, but I'll just let, I'll let uh, the viewers know there is more. <laughs> there is a lot more. There's... The book is amazing. And we didn't even talk about your you got like three or four albums, beautiful stuff. I have a song at the at the end I'm going to be playing uh, <coughs> that I was a little outro. So the, the, how, how many, uh, yeah, like websites and things like that? You can yeah. have to give me those links and I'll provide with the bottom. But you sure, just, I'll, uh, I'll send that to you. It's EileenMeyer.com is the main website. Um, and... I have SoundCloud and I have stuff on set. I have stuff everywhere. <laughs> I have stuff in a lot of different places. Just give me the list of the ones you want. Okay. Out okay. There and, I'll, and I'll put them. Listen, thank you so much. I have to say, like I've done a few interviews before and, and uh, I try to make a point in my interviews to try to bring it back to heart, bring it back to love. Mm -hmm. But this, this last, I've been, we've been talking for like about three hours now, or two hours, <laughs> no, three hours. We've been talking for three hours and it was all about love, all about the feeling yeah. of love for the mother of, of the universe, of humanity. And then once you have that love, this is the another thing that's universal with all the people who are awakening. Once you have that love, you want to share it, you want yeah. to give, you want to connect. And uh, so thank you so much for such a profound interview. Well, thank you, Michael. I'm so happy you're doing this. I, I'm, you know, thank you for showing up and being present. I know you do a lot of different things. Um, and, and this is one that I'm grateful for as well. Any last words? You know, I, I suppose the last words would be, um, this is really happening. This is really happening. And as crazy as it is in your own individual lives, the way they might be right now, and as crazy as it is in the outer reality, um, don't get sucked in to, to any of that. Because within you is that power and that grace and, and your creator. Um, and and we're, we're, we're going to do this. We're doing this. This is happening. That's a great place to stop. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.